All right, we have a special tech nerd edition of the Speed Academy Tuning Dungeon Learns Stuff episode with our buddy Chris Theodoratus. We just call him Theo. And he brought this giant torque wrench for us. He's going to teach us all about torque and how to use torque wrenches. There he is. Here we go. Boom. Let's do this. Since we can't have a strain gauge in every bolt, we use torque wrenches. This is what the engineers figured was the uh, easiest way for the uh, common folk to do it. And all a torque wrench does is measure length times force. So when you apply a force to this length, it applies torque and it's directly proportionate. So it's very simple math and it's very simple for this tool to calculate it. What comes into play though is accuracy and the way that the tools are used which is why there are a variety of different torque wrenches available to um, whether you're a shade tree mechanic, a weekend racer, or if you're an assembly plant building thousands of these cars uh, every year. Which kind of brings up uh, why we're doing this. You saw our, our S14 video where Pete and I were talking about torquing flywheel bolts, was it? The video where Pete's wrong? Yeah, exactly. The All video right. where Pete's yeah. wrong, yeah. yeah. And he was talking about using kind of a, a fast... Uh, application of torque and I was talking about using more of a slow and steady application so today we're gonna prove Pete wrong basically we brought the tools we brought the technology to uh, to do this so uh, sorry Pete we got to do it buddy you know what though after we run the test we'll figure it out I might be uh, eating my boot <laughs> <laughs> uh, next we have the adjustable clicker type torque wrench uh, these are fantastic and I would assume this is what most of us have in the garage yeah uh, all that we do here is zero it out and you'll dial that handle until you get to the right amount of torque that you want to apply so I'm gonna bring this up to 30 foot-pounds yep. and what should happen is when I apply torque to this it should click at 30 foot-pounds we'll be able to test that a little bit later okay these come in a variety of different sizes this one measures uh, pounds feet of torque this one measures inch pounds of torque. So you'd probably use this when you're doing your valve train, potentially. Right. Uh, and this on bigger stuff. Right. Um, now, one of the problems with this, and you'll notice when I put this thing down, I didn't zero it out. There's a spring inside the handle here. Yep. Which is attached to a little cam. So when you apply that force, it deflects the spring. The cam will kick over, which makes that click. If we don't zero this thing out, when we go to put it back in our toolbox every time, yeah. the spring inside will develop a memory. Right. Uh, so you'll lose some accuracy. The other thing with these torque wrenches is at the low end of the scale and at the very high end of the scale, they're not as accurate. Right. It's not consistent the whole way through. Right. These tools really do have a sweet spot. And in most of these tools, the instructions will tell you what that sweet spot is. Okay. So it'll give you a plus minus uh, of a few percentage points. Okay. Uh, the better the tool is, the smaller that plus minus will be. That's one of the things we get when we step up from a um, discount tool store to a big box tool store to one, you know, if you're buying something off a tool truck. Yep. It's the degree of accuracy right. and that range that'll really come into effect. Gotcha. When you're shopping for your tool, just know what the use is. If you're only ever going to use this for lug nuts uh, and you're going to take it to the track, buying an inexpensive tool is not a bad thing. Yeah. If you're going to be assembling engines or critical suspension components, that's when you should know it's, it's time to step up because you need that extra accuracy. So what is the most accurate type of torque wrench for a uh, garage guy to use? Yeah. It would be these digital type torque wrenches. These have been on the market probably for between eight to 10 years right now. Okay. And this actually has a transducer built into the head. So I'll fire this up. Um, I should have it lying down on the bench and it'll zero itself out. But what this will do, because it has the transducer, yeah. it does a few different things. You can dial your torque in to the nearest foot pound, yeah. right on the head there. Yeah. You can change the unit of measure from foot pounds to inch pounds to Newton meters. The great thing about this is you set your torque in here. As you apply force to it, a couple of things will happen. And this is where uh, we're gonna catch Peter a little bit. It'll start making some noise. So as you start to approach your torque, this torque wrench will give you an audible feedback. It'll oh. start to beep. Okay the light is gonna turn orange, saying you're getting close to your torque, slow down. 
Ah. When you hit your torque, it the light will turn green to, to tell you you've hit it. Yeah. The torque, the wrench will vibrate and it'll let off a steady tone. Interesting. Just say, you've hit your torque. Okay. If you overshoot it, the light turns red and it starts flashing the number on the readout of the torque you actually hit. Ah. Um, this is great. If you're working uh, and you need a high degree of accuracy, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. If you're working where you can't really see and you're in a very tight space, yeah. great for that too. Awesome. Okay. That's a pretty cool tool. And what is that? What would one of those sell for price-wise? Um, there's, there's a few of them on the market now. You can even get them in the big box stores. Anywhere probably from $250. This one, because it measures angle as well, upwards of $500. Okay. Most guys don't need to measure angle. We're going to do the uh, torque shootout right now. So we have the Speed Academy uh, official torque wrench. What this is, is a torque analyzer. So remember I was talking about the strain gauges inside the bolt? Yeah. That's essentially what this is. It's a little transducer. So this is measuring the torque in between the head of the torque wrench and um, the output here. And it's going to measure on here. So this uh, torque wrench is set to 80 foot-pounds. I'm going to apply force till it clicks. And what do we hit? 72.5. Damn. What's going on, Theo? Let's try another one here. All right. So just clear this out. Let's apply some force till it clicks. 73.2. Wait a minute. Did somebody forget to zero out this torque wrench? Yeah, it's probably been sitting there for a while. So. All right. Let's, uh, let's swap out our torque wrench, uh, get something a little bit more accurate, okay. and uh, get on with the shootout. Ooh, 82.5. So, you know, one was a little higher, one was a little bit lower. Ken's got a strong torque wrench. I just zeroed it. Or, uh, yeah, zeroed it. 82.3. So oh, it's accurate. It's consistent. Just a few degrees off. A little high. All right. So well, we've got a good setup here. Let's go on with the shootout. All right. So the shootout is Ken is going to be our Peter for the day. He's going to use the aggressive... You know, fast technique, and then I'll come in and be the gentle lover and use the slow and steady technique. You ready? Sounds good. So, uh, fast and aggressive. Show us what you got. Ready? One, two, three. So, what did you see there, Theo? Uh, one was 98, I believe, and the last one was 109. 109. Now we've got that torque wrench set for 80 foot-pounds. Wow. So he blew over almost by 30 foot-pounds. Yes. Using the Pete technique. Peter. This one goes out to all you gentle lovers out there. Slow and steady, boy. Slow and steady. Ready? I got these three, right? I think so, yeah. Let's do it. So how'd I do, coach? 81.4. That's pretty so damn good. Pretty accurate the whole way across. We're all three about that? Yep. See? Well, that's pretty conclusive evidence, Pete. Slow and steady, boys. Don't go banging on your torque wrench. It's not what it's for. It's a precision tool. To the viewers, that was a bit of an exaggerated uh, thing on my part. <laughs> Pete doesn't go that hard. Ken was pretty aggressive, I'll admit. But still, it's a good lesson to learn. Torque wrenches, slow and steady. Thank you, Theo. We really appreciate the education. My pleasure. It was awesome. I'll uh, be back for volume uh, two, three, and four about torque wrenches. We're going to get real specific. Oh, are we? No, we're not. No, we're not. But we're going to talk no about oil, that. maybe, because he's an oil guy now. He used to be a tool guy. He worked at Snap-on, and now Ooh. he's a Castrol guy. So. Tools and lube. Tools and lube. Yeah. It's our kind of guy. So on these dial-type torque wrenches, uh, you can see there's two needles on here. You've got the orange one and the blue one. And to get this thing to work, we've got to zero it out. So I'm physically turning that dial... And you can see that it picked up the blue needle. I'm going to move that over to zero, and that is zeroed out. Right. Next thing I'll do is turn this dial up to, excuse the fingers, 50 foot-pounds of force. And when I apply a load to this, the orange needle will move up until it touches that blue one. If I overshoot it, it'll move that blue one over to know that we've overshot our torque. You've pulled a Peter. <laughs> 